Uh, so you're in the, um, the Joe Grand opening uh, warm-up act or, or GoPro or uh, get the fuck out, um, which they wouldn't say in the marketing uh, promotions for this. Um, this is a, a, a fairly short talk, um, but uh, Todd and I have basically been working on uh, messing around with these cool, awesome cameras. So, uh, for 20 minutes. In 20 minutes. Which we actually just, for 20 minutes before the talk yeah. worked Our on. entire research project is 40 minutes long, including this talk. Right. Uh, so our agenda, um, the, you know, the intro that, um, in which we will cover. Entourage, motherfuckers, do you speak wow. it? Wow, only a 20 minute talk? And he just lost three of it. That's too bad. Uh -oh. Excuse me. This is completely expected. <laughs> you should have showed up prepared for this. Shit. Why are we here? Shit. Why are we here? Yeah, why are we here? We are here. Yeah. We figure that uh, they have spot the Fed. We have shot the noob. Uh, oh, noob has a number of meanings, and so there's only one that applies. So we also need somebody from the audience who's a new, uh, new person. You, sir. Yeah, you Preferably go. a female. Oh, See, well, close once enough. again, the... <laughs> close enough. That's all right. he's, he's midway through Come the change. Stage. Come on up. On I'll take two. You know, guys try to act like they're going to make you drink, but they won't give you two. You know, I mean, I don't know. I guess ticket prices are going to be a little higher next year, y'all. Okay. Oh, see, now, now you only have, now you have four minutes left. Damn it. <laughs> all right. That's all right, because we, we didn't really have the material. Shut up and drink. All right, shut up and Cheers. drink. Woo. GoPro GTFO. Woo! Thank you, young lady. Do I get a GoPro? Uh, you know, I thought about it, but uh, no, you don't. <laughs> the young lady might, you know, might have gotten the GoPro, but you know. Yeah. Right. Uh, bring more booze next time, All fellas. Right. Yeah. Okay. So, um, continuing on. So we'll have our brief intro. Um, if we basically didn't already do that while drinking. Um, we'll talk a little bit about the GoPro. Uh, due to time limitations, we're going to kind of gloss over some stuff. Um, we're going to cite previous research because um, we're not the first ones to mess with this, but uh, you know, we want to give credit where credit is due. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about what we've done so far, um, and we're certainly not, not finished, um, as well as some of the things that have kind of come out of this, uh, this research up to this point. Um, we'll talk a little bit about what we're going to do next, and then finally we'll conclude with um, a bunch of useless slides. So first, um, Todd. What's up? Um, I'm Todd Manning, uh, senior research consultant at Acuvant Labs. Uh, horror for hire, you know. Um, I used to work at Breaking Point, managing their security research team, and uh, now I turn it over to my co-presenter. Hi, I'm Zach Lanier, um, or some of you know me as Quine. Uh, I'm also a senior research consultant. I guess we would have whistled at. Yeah, man. That's awesome. I'm not even wearing a dress this year. Uh, he is wearing panties, though. Backwards. Uh, I'm also a senior cons uh, research consultant with Acuvant Labs. Um, just old timey net web app mobile pen tester guy. Um, anyway, so why did we pick the GoPro? Because Todd wanted to. Because uh, I had one, basically. Uh, it's, it's an incredibly popular camera. I'm sure some of you have seen it uh, out in the wild, uh, used in music videos featuring scantily clad men and women and uh, skateboarders who put them on their, um, their skateboards and fall a lot, uh, like me. Uh, it's Wi-Fi enabled, which was attractive because it's got all these cool features on it that you can use your, uh, your phone to control the camera. Uh, one of the more interesting facts is there's this, uh, a company called Amberella that makes this the eponymously named... Um, uh, SOCs uh, that are used not only in the GoPro but also in commercial security installations, which we found to be intriguing. So that's, I've, you know, another future research thing. 
Um, we, we focus mainly on the GoPro uh, Hero 3 Black Edition, uh, which is what we've, we've got up here. Um, so a lot of the details that will be in here will apply, um, but some of the hardware is a little bit different, uh, as we'll kind of see a little bit later. And plus, it's really extreme. I can't say that with much more emphasis, but... I can. It's fucking extreme. Uh, Mountain Dew. So, uh, anyway. So, an overview of the GoPro. Um, it features an Amberella, uh, mistyped, uh, A770 camera SOC. So they basically just stamp this SOC with like a, an, ARM, an ARM V6 core um, with all of like, all the other usual things you'd expect, JTAG, UART, blah, 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 their, um, and their, uh, their IOs for their um, light sensors and uh, accelerometer, whatever. And then they put this stupid LCD on it. Um, and then they put on this uh, Etheris um, uh, wireless controller, which has Bluetooth, but they don't use it. I don't know why. And there's a bunch of other stuff that's really not relevant to um, security or hacking this thing. But uh, in any case, um, it has a lot of stuff that's not used, uh, all packed into this tiny little, tiny, Sub little, tiny little form factor. Uh, I figured it was my turn to talk. Okay, so um, the one interesting thing, the first thing that we kind of found when we uh, busted the, the, this camera open, it runs uh, two operating systems, not just one. Um, so two for the price of one. Um, one is the iTron uh, embedded operating system. Um, it's kind of like this open source uh, sort of real-time operating system standard, really. So the, the version that runs on here is kind of one implementation to the standard uh, developed by a Japanese uh, academic in the 90s, I guess. Um, so it's primarily responsible for the operation of the camera, so capturing images, doing uh, encoding a video, that kind of thing. Um, and then it also runs Linux uh, kernel version 2.6.38. Um, so the way the real-time OS works, if, if you guys know about that, typically there's like, you know, a bunch of threads that are all doing different things. Um, one thread is dedicated to running Linux. And so um, basically the Linux operating system is on there to run um, some of the sort of higher order functions um, that deal with uh, remote control of the camera via uh, like um, mobile application, that kind of thing. Um, and so, uh, the, yeah, two operating systems. Um, there's a private network that runs in between the two. The networking address is given here, 10.9.9 slash 24. Um, the, uh, the, the real-time operating system side runs one web server that kind of handles um, s certain requests. Actually, it uh, looks like it serves up some of the, uh, um, like, preview mode files, and then, um, uh, the Linux side runs the uh, version of the open source Cherokee uh, web server that handles um, actually taking requests from the uh, mobile uh, remote control applications and then passes commands from that uh, on to the real-time operating system uh, via a mechanism we'll describe shortly. Yeah, so um, some previous research, right? So looking into this camera, it's like, eh, somebody's got to know something about it, right? Uh, otherwise, we're screwed. Um, so the OG of, like, you know, uh, GoPro kind of, like, dissection is uh, this cat called Evil Wombat. Hangs out on this, uh, the GoPro user forum. Super uh, real friendly guy that I've talked to, real willing to give uh, information um, about how it works. Um, he's developed a, a number of open source tools that are available on GitHub slash Evil Wombat. Um, he's got, uh, let's see, he's an, an ARM uh, firmware developer is all he's told me. I know he lives on the West Coast. Um, other than that, you know, uh, I haven't really talked to him for more than just a few hours. Stop dropping docs. Stop dropping docs, okay. Uh, anyhow, sorry about that. Let's see. Uh, so yeah. So in his firm, in his uh, repository, he's got like tools for breaking apart the uh, the firmware updates that come from GoPro, so that you can kind of like do some further analysis yourself. Breaks them up into different sections. Uh, he's got a tool that will let you connect to USB and then boot your own custom Linux kernel, um, so that if you you know brick your camera like I've done, um, you can you know ostensibly unbrick it. There are some. Uh, there are some cases where that doesn't actually work, but um, 
yeah, he, real nice guy that has made some tools and so, you know, has, has uh, we've stood on the shoulders of at least, you know, one giant and that would be Evil Wombat. So if you're here, man, I'll buy you like dinner and a drink and, uh, you know, take you to a movie. You're a real sweet person. So one of the things that Evil Wombat provided was um, this autoexec.ash script, which we mentioned um, here. And that's for the Amberella shell. Um, so if you put that onto the SD card, at the root of the SD card in the GoPro, um, it will basically autoexec whatever you put in there. So, so, so it wasn't um, that he provided it, it's rather he discovered that the camera will execute a script called autoexec.ash that's in the root of the uh, SD card. And so there are a number of like commands that you can provide and, and he can't kind of give us our foot first uh, foothold into understanding what it was that we could do, you know, with the camera by doing that. That's better. Uh, and, and so one of the things is um, this, there's actually a command in the, Amber, the Amberella shell called T. Um, and it, it, it does a lot of low level control of the, um, the RTOS. And in this case, it actually, uh, this, what you see down at the very bottom, this T app test, USB RS232, uh, one, sets that uh, it'll just basically provide a serial console over uh, USB. Um, so it gives you this access to the RTOS's Amberella shell. Um, one of the things that you should, there's a slew of commands in there that we can't even go through in, in even 30 minutes. Um, but one of the things you shouldn't do is run, um, as someone did, the T NAND op erase command, which successfully bricks your camera. Um, so you know, don't do that. Yeah, I would say don't do that. Um, when you run that command, you know, and that heinous deleting all the NANDs comes up, uh, you don't die right at that moment, but when you reboot, you really wish you hadn't. Let me just put it that way. One of the other commands um, that Evil Wombat shared um, or discovered and shared was this LU util command. And what this effectively does is allows the RTOS to talk to um, the Linux task uh, over this IPC channel. And one of the things that it does is uh, there's an exec parameter and that will effectively allow the RTOS to instruct Linux to execute any command um, as root like you do. Um, so in this case, uh, these snippets here, as provided in effectively by Evil Wombat, uh, kill the Cherokee web server um, and start Telnet, uh, Telnet D listening on 80 because um, 8080 externally is forwarded to 80 uh, internally on Linux. So that's really the only port that you can, one of the only ports you can get to externally on the Linux internal operating system. So effectively it just kills Cherokee and runs Telnet on 80, which drops you directly into a root shell like you do. So, um, you know, we are here, hey cool, we got root on a camera, yay, everyone go home. Um, Todd's a badass. Uh, so a little bit about the methodology and kind of findings that we did. Um, one of the first things that we actually looked at uh, while maybe drinking was uh, looking at the, um, the GoPro app mode of the camera. So it runs in one of two modes, Wi-Fi remote or GoPro app. Um, the first of which is this GoPro app mode. And that allows you to install a Linux or iOS um, app on your, on your device. Um, the camera acts as an access point. Um, you associate with it with your, mo your mobile device of, of choice and it connects to those two web servers. Um, the web server that it talks to on 80 is the one running in iTron that it uses for a, as a control channel and for retrieving and setting configuration directives. And then on 8080, uh, it actually retrieves this, um, this, this streaming preview. And what's interesting about this is, um, and by the way, you, the, the Wi-Fi backpack uses 10.5.5.9. Um, there are a few interesting things about this. One, it uses MDNS for discovery as what we kind of observed, but it, uh, it connects to 10.5.5.9 anyway. That's hard coded in there. So it, I don't know if it's a fallback or what, but whatever. The other thing is that it uses MPEG TS for um, streaming of the preview video, but what it does is it retrie continually retrieves this playlist, like an MUA file or whatever. Um, and in that file, uh, each time are 8.3 second um, uh, video files that it retrieves. So it's not really streaming the data directly so much as just retrieving these like you know, 0.3 second files, playing one, retrieving the next one, playing that, retrieving the next one, playing that, retrieving the playlist again, and then retrieving a new set of files, and this just kind of rotates through. Um, you, you can actually just point QuickTime or VLC or whatever insecure media player you like at the, uh, the MUA file and effectively just stream the preview video from the camera, kind of turning it into a, you know, surveillance device if you so actually were able to, authentic, you know, authenticate and associate with it. We'd ask that the NSA not uh, avail themselves of that uh, offensive technology, please. Right. 
So the other mode that's notable is the Wi-Fi remote mode, and this one we actually find to be a little more interesting, um, which you know we can discuss in the hallway track. Uh, in this case, the Wi-Fi remote, which I don't know if we have with us, it's the smaller device, a little keychain device. In this case, the camera acts as a mobile station or client and associates to the AP, which is the remote. Um, when you first pair them, it just scans for any uh, for an ESS ID of hero dash rc hero dash rc dash xxxxxx, where those are the last three octets of the um, of a given uh, remote. Um, once it's paired, it'll record that information and prefer that, but you can always pair it to a new remote. So you can draw your own conclusions as to what attacks might be possible there. It's also totally open. There's no no security whatsoever, so you can just associate with a remote if you see one. Um, we're still sort of exploring what the implications are about attacking the remotes, um, but anyway. Um, network attack surface. Um, the Cherokee web server runs as root, um, even though it listens on an unprivileged port on the Linux side of things. Uh, we notice that there are absolutely no additional mitigations. Um, the compiler options and the linker options are available like on the file system of the camera. Uh, so you can totally have fun there. Um, the, exec uh, the executable base itself is not randomized, so you know reliability of a payload is not really difficult if you find a bug, which some people might have. Um, so we're, we're, we're like at five minutes. So um, uh, itron side. Um, okay. So like we said, two web servers um, on the on the real time OS side, on the itron side. Um, there are these uh, URLs that you can that the uh, the uh, remotes connect to to uh, engage different uh, behavior of the camera itself. Um, some are configuration type uh, commands that will um, you know reconfigure uh, capture settings for uh, the camera that will uh, you know start recording, stop recording, that kind of thing. Um, basically, you know once you connect to uh, uh, the, the Wi-Fi access point, you can just hit these in a browser and, and kind of reconfigure the camera uh, willy-nilly. Um, we're working on a, uh, a Ruby-based library that basically acts as the uh, control. Um, let's see. And then uh, it, it actually it passes the, the passphrase in. Um, and I haven't found the, the code path that cares about that, and I'm not sure why that happens, but it seems kind of silly. I mean, I guess it's, you know, the key is protected by WPA, so whatever, but um, yeah, it seems kind of, kind of strange. Um, and, and basically once you, you know, if you find, were to find a bug, you know, in, in either the, the, the real-time OS or the Linux side, um, you know, I guess from the, from the real-time OS side, y you're done. If you, if you find like a Cherokee bug, for instance, then you've got, a, you've got a, uh, some work to do there to, uh, to, to bridge the gap over to the real-time OS side. So. Uh, in terms of uh, local attack surface, um, again, everything runs as root, so there is uh, no privilege separation. Um, uh, everything except for uh, the actual, so sorry, all the libraries are uh, loaded at randomized addresses. Um, the, uh, the web server itself, so uh, Cherokee and the Cherokee worker uh, load their images at hex 8000. Um, there's actually a couple of uh, sections that get mapped there. Uh, uh, sorry, 8000 and then like uh, hex 8300. Um, let's see. Uh, it, it runs BusyBox, so there's, uh, excuse me, there are some, some useful, you know, BusyBox uh, utilities there, but there's no, you know, build tools or, or no Netcat. You know, sometimes you see that on like random BusyBox uh, devices. I, I feel like you want to break in there, my friend. Uh, so basically it's just in the, uh, ASLR is enabled system wide, but the, um, the uh, pretty much every executable base is mapped at a static address, or always mapped at static addresses, so it's not terribly difficult to get like reliable code exec. I, I feel like I had already said that actually, but um, you know, maybe not. Um, so uh, there, there are a number of like interesting, you know, quote unquote, uh, services that are running. Um, a couple of them listening on on TCP ports uh, 7878 and 7877. Um, they uh, they handle JSON. Well, one of them handles JSON formatted messages from the Itron side, which I thought was kind of strange. Um, they uh, uh, basically it's it's you know their mechanism of communicating across like these two operating systems. So they they share the same memory and they're kind of using like this queue based uh, message passing thing. And uh, hey, it's a great time to talk about that. So 
The um, so we're like two. We have like two minutes left, uh, so we'll probably breeze through all this. Um, whatever. Running IPCS dash p. We see that uh, there are these uh, message queues that are share, uh, that are there, and they point to this uh, Amber MQ handler, which is the Amberella MQ message queue handler, which is for receiving and sending messages from Linux to Itron. Um, worth exploring. Uh, there on the Amberella or the um, Itron side, in uh, AMP shell you can run uh, IPC prog. I know it's probably hard to read, but it just spits out like a thousand bajillion lines of all these different IPC uh, programs that are registered. So it's kind of RP like Sun RPC ish. There's like a program ID that maps to a specific uh, program that's actually listening in this IPC uh, channel. Um, and that's basically all we're going to talk about for there because we're running out of time. Um, future research, uh, remote monitoring. Uh, legitimate monitoring uh, using like bespoke or third party clients using the camera to spy. Um, that sounds really cool. Uh, next thing would be to dump firmware from the Wi Fi remote as well as deal with this uh, fancy little GoPro um, 30 pin uh, bus interface, which is remarkably similar to the, I, the Apple iPod uh, 30 pin connector and it uses things for like LCD and a bunch of other stuff. Um, back doors, persistence, blah, blah, blah. Um, so with that, um, we're going to be releasing code eventually, maybe like, I don't know, tomorrow when we're sober, um, at github.com slash quine slash gopro gtfo. So watch that space. Uh, over the next couple months we'll, we'll have, a, have some stuff up there. Um, and finally, uh, if you want to reach us, T Manning on Twitter, quine on Twitter, or email us, and then uh, these are really cool people down at the bottom. And if you aren't on that, um, and you should be, we're really sorry. Um, we're out of time, so um, we'll take questions in the hallway track, I guess. Uh, thank you for coming. Uh, the lovely Todd.